Hello friends, welcome and welcome back. So, what does it mean to become profound at something and how we can achieve it? To answer this question, I have created a simple three-step mechanism that we can call ARC or ARC framework. I got a lot of requests on my Telegram, LinkedIn and even on comments that how to become data engineer, what should be the path, people are from different backgrounds, want to go through data engineering, but they are not sure how to start. So I answered few of them. But for remaining all, I decided to create this video. So let's go through the parts of this ARC framework one by one. So the first part of ARC framework is acquire. In the acquire step, we will analyze what are the key things that we need. It doesn't matter if you have a data engineering background, if you are preparing for data engineering, or even if you are preparing for something else, three steps should work for all of that. So the first part that we will understand is which are the technologies that we want to target. Like today, if we start preparing for something that is not in use, then definitely it's not of any use. We want to target for something that will be useful in future. And that's why I have categorized these things into some parts that we will go one by one. So the first part is storage. In storage, I have selected Delta Lake. So why I have selected Delta Lake? Delta Lake is an open source storage platform. There are others like Apache Hoodie, etc. You can select uh, any of them, but for me, because I am preparing for Databricks as well, so I have decided to go with Delta Lake, which is open source and it is backed by Linux Foundation. So now we have a data storage and now we want to move data into that data storage. There can be application that you want to pull data from, there can be like databases and so on. So it doesn't matter. We want to pull all the data into Delta Lake or our storage. So for that specific purpose, what we are going to do we are going to use Apache Airflow along with Apache Spark. So Airflow is going to orchestrate all the things, whereas Apache Spark is going to do all the transformation. So there can be scripts written in Apache Spark. If you are totally uh, unaware of this thing, just consider it as like we have some script that are going to do some specific part. And now when we want to combine those scripts to work together, then we are going to use Apache Airflow to orchestrate what should be the first, what should be the second and third and so on. So that's how we are going to use this combination of Apache Airflow and Apache Spark. For swimming analytics, we are going to use Apache Kafka. So just recently we created a project for stock market analysis using Apache Kafka. There we used Python and uh, Yahoo Finance API to generate the data, then dumped it into Kafka, then use Apache Druid to pull the data. And then once it is available in Apache Druid, then we used Apache Superset again to pull the data and display it in as a, as a report. So that's how like we can use Kafka for streaming analytics. Now the data is pulled and kept into storage layer, made be using Kafka, made be using Spark and Apache Airflow. But now the data is ready and to be used. Now there can be multiple things that we can do. But for this specific channel, we are going to focus on two things. One is reporting. So for reporting or data visualization, we're going to use two tools. One is Apache Superset and then BERT. Maybe I can even use Power BI in between, but for now, let's consider open source tools that is BERT and Apache Superset. So why we're going to use two tools, like why we even need two tools. So let's consider example of Power BI. If you are uh, aware of there are two tools in Power BI, one is Power BI Desktop and then Power BI Report Builder. So these two things work with each other, or you can say, one is built for interactivity. So you can click on the pie chart and it will uh, interact with other visualization to filter out the thing. For example, if you're working on a report which has categorization as male, female, if you click on male, then the remaining report is going to get filtered for only male. Or if you select on female, it is going to then filter out only for female. So that kind of interactivity, we're going to use superset. Then there is one more thing that we want. So if you have ever used any reporting tool, when you say I want some report and the report is interactive and you want to print, it is going to give you screenshot. It is not going to convert it into that specific thing where you can scroll and so on. It is going to give you screenshot. Even that is valid for superset. So now when we need something that is more of a printable format or a, or a PDF, then what to do in that scenario, but that is business intelligent reporting tool in, will come into picture there. we. We will have to build separate reports than the superset, but yeah, those will be in printable format. You can export it into Word, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever you want. Even you can create receipt. So that's how this BERT and superset combination will come into picture. Okay. Now we are ready with the reporting part. We are ready with this uh, printable reports. What else we can do with the data? So what we can do is do some kind of predictive analytics. So yeah, as in boom. So definitely we need to have at least basic understanding. Uh, I did some project like customer churn uh, for bank and so on. So these kind of projects we can use 
and definitely i uh, at this point i have no idea what i will prepare for this specific channel but definitely i'm going to target that as well okay so now we are ready with everything now the part is deployment and one more part that is uh, basics so before deployment i'm going to cover basics so to gain all this information all the understanding of these tools we need to have basic understanding if you are going to use bird it is built on java so you need to have understanding of java if you are going to use spark then you can prefer scala or you can prefer python so if you are having python background let's stick with python for everything so we should have a better understand uh, uh, under at least understanding of python then being data engineer we should be aware about scraping because it is required data needs to be pulled from some sometimes it needs to be pulled from some website needs to be scraped so that's why then some kind of basic javascript as well as some css if you want to customize your superset report and so on so these are basic things that you need to know you need to have a good understanding of then comes miscellaneous so i added this segment uh because there are few technologies that we don't even think of but those are very essential for us for example docker and again one more thing that is git so why docker when i was working on superset i realized it was very easy to deploy it on docker as compared to on bare metal you just do docker installation then just create a docker compose file do some kind of customization and run it and it will work like a charm so that's why docker is very important and now we are also working on dockers on many of our application each part is going to be a separate container like front end back end and then we're going to combine them using a docker compose file and so on so that's why docker is now essential part of uh, most of the application when we want to build it quickly and deploy it and so on one more thing that is going to come into picture when you want to deploy that is kubernetes for production deployment and then git is very essential when you are working on a company and uh, when you are collaborating with someone then git is one of the most important thing that you want to know by heart and you need to have a good understanding of it so that is what we now identify the technologies that we want so we have acquired the understanding of the technologies that we want to learn now the next part will come that is refine in refine you can just start with learning these technologies there are courses available you can go to udemy you can go to plural site you can go to youtube uh there are courses available in many sites you just can go through these courses just have a basic understanding what they are doing and so on you can go through the documentation the documentation it takes lot of time and effort to go through documentation for learning so i usually prefer going through a video just a plain video that shows you everything even if you play it on 2x speed that is even fine like uh, there are some videos those are very slow so you can play it 1.5 or 1.25 x speed and then just go through that video once you have a good understanding how these technologies work then you can just start replicating whatever is shown in that course so that is the first part just have a understanding once we have a understanding we can try implementing it and then once we implemented it we can just create a project so in this channel we are going to combine technologies together like uh, the project i was talking about earlier the uh, the stock market analysis we did combination of all the technologies right from python uh, apis to kafka druid superset and even for predictive analytics we are going to do something so these kind of combination things we are going to use for projects so that we will have good understanding how these technologies work individually we already know we go, we gone through the videos now we are also aware how these technologies interact with each other and how they work together so that is the second part we now did refinement one more part that you can do now having practical knowledge it will be easy for us to go through the theoretical part so you can just go for certifications for example i am a certified data engineer i am a microsoft certified data engineer i am a google certified data engineer and databricks certified data engineer i have also did some courses on aws now people ask me what is the use of this certification one benefit i got is when i joined a company a big organization and uh, they showed my certification to the customer and the customer was very happy so that we we are getting certified professionals that helped me to switch projects where there was a development project they used to call me uh, just because i have a certification in azure i got lot of azure projects so that's how it might help you in resume also you can definitely add certification and if you give the certification honestly at least you have you have gone through the course at least once so you know what are the services what they are used for even if you are not implementing in real life but you at least know what these certain technologies are so certification is definitely helpful for now i, I am databricks certified data engineer but still i am going to prepare for 
Databricks certified Spark developer, which is like PySpark. There are two different pathways. One is PySpark and Scala. I'm going to focus for PySpark for now. But yeah, definitely you can go for that. Again, there is a company called as Confluent. They are providing certification for Kafka. So that is also one option. I don't think that I will go for that certification like right now. But yeah, that is also one more thing that I can try. Now the last part, which is completely optional, but it is very important. If you can do that, that will be really great. That is contribution. So why contribution is important? When we say contribution, it is not only just to give back for the community. When we do contribution, we understand how these tools works, how these technologies are built, how they are doing or what is their plan? What is their implementation plan? All these technologies are built using some kind of something in their mind when people are doing it for organization or something. So for example, when we say Apache superset, we know that Airbnb is using it and they are doing something using superset. So how they are building it, why they are supporting it, all these things you will understand. So, okay, that is just a business part of it. Now, when we say that I am working on, I am contributing on the project, then when in real life, in production, if I am working on something and I got some issues, for example, a company came to me saying that they have 800 to 900 reports on one page of a website that is coming from uh, 800 to 900 chart not reports that is coming from open source superset and they want to show it to the public but when they are showing it it is becoming really slow because even if they have a strong big server they are going to continuously api call it for multiple things so what they ended up doing they opened apache superset they removed some uh, security api calls in between because the website was open they didn't care about the security so they removed some APIs. So in that kind of scenario, when the optimization is required, understanding how the code is implemented is very essential. And that will make a point in your career specifying. Okay, people are using it, but I am someone who knows how it is built. And I am someone who knows when it comes to optimization, how to do the optimization or whatever is required, I should be able to implement it. So that is how the contribution is going to help. So how to start with contribution for that? I'll just going to open something in my screen. So here now I am in Apache Supersets website. You can see there are two things. One is documentation, one is community. So for now, I'm just going to open the documentation in new link. You can say there is something that is called as contribution here as well. So I'm going to contributing to Superset. There is a mailing list where people are mailing. Uh, I, I, I did not get a chance to look at all the mails, but there are some mails coming like what is the action plan and so on. That's what it is. But to start, I'm going to definitely start with Slack community. So if I click here, it is going to open Slack. Let me quickly open it. Yeah. So this is Apache Superset Slack. You can see I have already joined a few others like this is Delta Lake. This is Apache NFI. This is Apache Airflow and so on. There are multiples uh, that I'm not able to add, but if in web portal, I'm able to see those. So you can see there are beginner frame, beginner questions. So someone is saying that I'm encountering some issue and so on and so forth. So what is use of this? One thing is you are now able to know what are the issues people are facing in real life when they are implementing this project. What you can do, just ask them how they got this issue. If it is not very clear and try to reproduce them. When you reproduce it, you know that how it is getting implemented in big organization. So when it comes to interview and you don't have any experience on this technology, like even if you are working, we don't know everything or all the parts of these technologies, but this kind of things will have, will help you to have a good understanding how other people are implementing and that will help you to answer the question in interviews. Now, the next part that I will do is here you can see superset community calendar. So. I opened it in. Okay, let it be. So if I click on display calendar, you can see there is a calendar and inside that calendar, there is a meeting schedule daily. If I open this, you can see this is a daily stand up call where people are like uh, assigning the task. They are approving it. They are merging it and all other things that they are doing. So you also know what is the action plan, what they are doing. Basically in the stand up call, they will discuss what are the action plan, what this is new task. This is something that is going to be planned. This is going to get assigned to someone and so on. In the beginning, even if we don't, we are not working on it. That is fine. We just know who is working. Try to see how they are asking the questions, what needs to be implemented, how they are implementing the code. And slowly, once we start understanding how people are implementing, then we can start working. Just try to reproduce and try to match with someone who is already working and then getting 
into the contribution actually so this is the second way you can just start working on contribution the next part is when i was discussing with one of the creators of this new valky so redis is now closed source like i created a back a video back and now there are some like four creators in valky so i was discussing from someone in valky and that guy told me that you can just contribute when you want to start contributing what you can do you can just go to github you can go to issues and start finding what are the open issues and just pick up what is a bug try to reproduce it and try to find a workaround or try to find find a solution so this is for someone who is actually in advanced step who already knows the code all the things but even if you are not aware you can just try to replicate again like what i said on the slack channel you can just try to replicate and reproduce the bug you will also find there are some labels i was just going through labels there is a label that says can't reproduce so they are not able to reproduce it so if you can then that will be really helpful for the community and the people who are trying to solve the problems there are things bugs new feature bugs cosmetics can't reproduce bugs blocking so these are like high, highest priority bugs you can see so this kind of scenarios you can work on you can, that will really help the people who are working on it and it will also start your community your contribution journey slowly one more way that you can start contributing is by creating some kind of plugins for example uh, for superset i am working on creation of additional charts for example i created open source uh, map plugin where people can just use open source map and just put their uh, code instead of using that proprietary tool that the superset is having other than that i am also creating other charts like venn diagram a video player along with line chart to show like what is the videos uh, viewers and so on these kind of plugins we are also building i'm going to make them open source so that people can just copy it i'm going to write a documentation how it can be implemented and if possible i'm going to create a package out of this just people can just download uh, after installing superset they can just pip inst uh, npm install that package and that should work uh there will be some steps in between like building even building superset but yeah we can try this is specific to superset but uh, for other tools for example even if you don't consider uh, open source tools say power bi you can again create custom visualization okay so that is for reporting tools even if we want to contribute to some other tools for example apache airflow in apache airflow they have connectors so you can work on connectors those are not available for example database connectors so if there is something that is missing for some specific database there are there is a demand people are want people want to come people want to contribute to that but they are not able to contribute or not able to create to or connect to the database you can just create a connector for that then uh, try it test it and definitely they will at some point in time when they also think that okay this is useful they are going to merge it and that is also one way to contribute even if they don't merge you still have open source project created on your name you are great have you will get followers subscriber again that will start your contribution journey so that is one more way to contribute so basically the main goal of contribution is to start understanding the tool how it works how we can get most of that tool how we can just use that tool to get whatever we want and how it is built how the code is and everything so that even if you are not working on that tool and want to de develop something else you also you already know how that tool is built so that you will get a benchmark how the code is written how the comments are and so on so that is also very essential when we are developer in community and want to work with team so that is one more benefit of contributing you will also build your contacts you will also have a good community like helping you and uh, that's what is all about contribution so to summarize this entire thing we are the, the framework is just a three step framework that is arc framework that is acquire refine and contribute so if you like this video please do like share and subscribe thanks for watching bye